Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And today I wanna to talk to you all about my tripod setup as a professional wildlife photographer, what I use out in the field, and a couple of the changes that I've kind of introduced over the last couple of years. Now recently I've seen more and more uh, kind of photographers talking about how tripods are redundant in modern photography, how due to the fact that we've got IBIS, in-body stabilization, VR, we just don't need a tripod anymore. And it's just complete rubbish. You see, a tripod isn't about just ensuring we get sharp images. It's far more than that. It's about giving us the um, creativity to work in different ways by maintaining a static position of the camera to allow the variables of shutter speed to kind of explore image making in a different way. You can create images with nice blurry motion in them with static subjects as well. That's something you just can't do whilst holding the camera in your hand as hard as you possibly try. It just isn't gonna give the same quality of result as a tripod will. It's why that all professional photographers pretty much have a really good high quality tripod in their bag because it really is an essential piece of equipment. For me, I can see that there's certain ways that people, you know, they've invested in a tripod and they're not getting the best out of it. Maybe they've not spent enough on it so that there's shortcomings in their tripod and therefore they get frustrated with it when they take it out. And of course, when you get frustrated with a piece of equipment, you decide to use it less and less and then you don't get any of the benefits out of it. And it's why when investing in photography equipment, a lot of the time it makes more sense to wait a bit longer, save a bit more money and spend on something really high quality than it is to spend on something less and then inevitably have to buy the correct one later down the line. Now for me, I've been using Jitso tripods ever since pretty much I was 16. You know, the reason I wanted one is I'd seen that all of the professional photographers that I followed and looked up to all had a Jitso tripod. So I knew it was the kind of industry standard at the time. It had all the features that I wanted, carbon fiber build quality, everything like that, really good support, but also um, features that are just super useful every day. And that's why I invested at the time. Now I do work with Jitso um, as a professional photographer, um, but you know, I've been using these tripods and bought them myself for many, many years um, before I ever worked with the company. Um, so they certainly are something that I've invested my own money in, um, and that's why I'm more than happy to talk about them. So when it comes to picking a tripod, there's a few key things you wanna get right first. You need something that's easily gonna support the weight of the equipment that you've got but it's also gonna give you flexibility for when maybe your equipment grows or for depending on how you're shooting, uh, that just extra headroom is always super useful. So this here is my bag of tripods, my kind of standard bag of tripods that I take everywhere. I throw this straight in the car before any assignment and I know that pretty much whatever's in front of me, it's gonna work and get the job done. I do have more tripods than just um, the three that I'm gonna talk about today. Um, but you know, as a professional photographer, there's certain situations when stuff does make sense to use uh, and I've invested in it. But these are kind of the core ones um, that I really feel are, are definitely worth spending the money on. So let's open this up. Now, I do also have my monopod in here. This is my Jitsu monopod. Super handy, been using this more and more over the last couple of years. Um, but I'm gonna do a separate video on this in the future and talk about monopod use. So I won't talk about that too much now. In here, I've got two main tripods. We've got firstly, and the one I'll talk about first, is this, the Systematic. This is my kind of all round solid beast of a tripod that can support everything I need all the time. And if I could only have one tripod, I would definitely have this one. The other one is this. This is a uh, Traveler from Jitso. This is a two series Traveler, and I absolutely love this as my kind of companion second tripod. So let's start with the Systematic. I'm gonna take the head off first um, so that I can just talk about the tripod legs. Um, now I have unscrewed that before the video so I could do that. Um, there is a little grub screw that I always tighten to keep the head locked to the tripod at any time. Now, if you've followed or seen any of my past videos on tripods, you'll know that I used to have the um, Systematic 3 Series, a 3442 LS as it was at the time. I really loved that tripod, used it for years. That was my original purchase of tripod when I was 16. And you know, they got me well into my professional career. Absolutely fantastic tripod. The reason I upgraded to the 4 Series tripod, um, this is the 4553S, to be specific, um, is mainly and only due to that one extra leg extension. 
And it's not for what you might think it is to get taller. It's actually to make the tripod slightly smaller. Um, it has the four series legs that are slightly thicker than my three series. But of course, because you have that extra leg extension, the kind of lower one is roughly the same width as my three series. The reason I wanted that is largely due to the fact that it makes it smaller, it's more compact to travel with, um, you know, and it just takes up less space wherever I go. Super, super handy. And as a wildlife photographer, 90% of the time, I am low um, using my tripod in the first or second extension or dead flat on the ground. So the kind of full height isn't something I'm necessarily worried about missing. Now the systematic tripod is all built around just a very simple design. Nice flat, large plate on the top, uh, triangular design that gives really good rigidity and support. You've got the great carbon fiber legs, the twist locks that are super easy to open and shut, much more reliable than lever locks, anything like that. You get less rubbish getting caught up them. You don't catch your fingers in them. That is really nice when they're freezing cold. It's got the leg locks at the top that mean you can have three possessions of leg angle. Your kind of first one is the standard one. Out one more and you kind of get like a mid angle. And then one that I pretty much use all the time is the low angle set. It means that when I pull them all out and get the tripod pretty much flat to the ground, that is amazing as a wildlife photographer. You can get those low angle views straight down the lines of your subject. It's absolutely superb. And this is just worth everything uh, on the Jitso systematic range. Completely love the fact that it does this. Underneath, you've got a hook. That means you can hang some weight on it to really dampen that support when you're up a bit further. And these plates in the middle come out. Um, you can easily detach them. Handy if you want to throw in like a video head with a, a bowl adapter, you can also do this on the tripod. So it's super flexibility. It's a very modular tripod that works very well. On the bottom, the feet also come off. I've just got the standard rubber feet use 90% of the time, but I also do have spikes uh, that I do use sometimes that is rather nice, especially if it's super muddy, anything like that. We're on ice, then I will switch them out. Little level in the top, but most of the time I don't really use that. So that is kind of my main tripod. It supports easily like 25 kilos, you know, large Z9, 600 mil, 800 mil, no problem whatsoever, even if you're working with medium format, whatever, it will support this, no problem. It is an absolute beast of a tripod. It's really lightweight, small, goes in my check luggage, no problem whatsoever. Um, absolutely love this. Would be the only tripod I own if I could only have one. That's there. Now on the top of that, I use two different heads. We've got the fluid gimbal that you saw when I took it out and the four series ball head. Uh, this is the new one from Jitsu. Now these two heads, um, you know, I use for different things um, and the same thing in some ways. So the fluid head really is mainly for long lens work. If I'm using a 600, my 300 2.8, and the 800 mil that I've been using recently, anything like that, the gimbal is really wonderful. Basically, it just gives you a fluid support of that long lens so you can have fingertip control and just track subjects as they're moving, flying, whatever they're doing is absolutely great for that. But what the fluid gimbal is not for is smaller lenses. You know, if you're doing landscape work or, you know, a 70 to 200, anything that's quite a bit smaller, you're gonna find that the fluid gimbal doesn't really work for that style of shooting. It really is focused only and solely for long lens shooting. Um, and that's absolutely fine because, you know, when I'm going out to do long lens work, I know I'm going to do long lens work most of the time. Um, so I can easily put this on the tripod and be happy with that all day. But of course, there are occasions and more and more over the last few years where I'm not just using a long lens anymore. I'm doing far more work with wide angles, shorter lenses and things like that than I ever have been. And that's why if I'm only taking one um, kind of head or I can only choose one head, the ball is so much better. Now the new four series ball head from Jitso um, gives me the same quality of support and stability as my fluid gimbal, whilst also opening up the door to also work with uh, wide angles and everything like that. It's kind of the one head to rule them all, as it were. Um, it will support up to 25 kilos, that is fantastic. It has a large ball. Now this is really important because the larger the ball is, the better the support and the way it dampens the movement of a long and heavy load on top. A really small ball, um, you know, it flops over a bit quicker. This means that you can have much better uh, support of those longer and heavier cameras. 
Now, it also has variable friction on it. Right then, I had it on a very loose setting. See, it falls over really easy. It means that you can have a very quick response um, with your camera lens, but you've got to make sure you're holding it when you uh, kind of de-loosen it and undo the head. If I turn up the friction quite a bit, I can then undo and leave it loose, and I've got really heavy friction on the ball. I can't really even move that myself. This is super handy if you want to leave the head ready to go so you can track subjects and move, but you want it to support the weight of the equipment you've got on it. This will actually support like the Z9 and my 300 2.8, no problem with any droop or anything like that. And I can leave it off just ready to move the camera as I go. That is really, really great. You can dial it in specifically, you know, get it a little bit less or a little bit more depending on how heavy uh, the camera is on top. And I found that to be absolutely great. You've also got a pan on the back, so if you want to frame up and do panoramics and just move the bottom of the head, works great for that as well. Um, and you know, it's just built with such durability in mind. It's an absolute tank of a head. I've actually got the um, quick lock on the top. It has an extra uh, lock as well that you have to press in to take it further. It means that you can't accidentally open the kind of latch and drop your uh, expensive camera or lens on the floor. That is really, really nice. Um, and even with gloves or anything like that, it's very easy to press and open it. So it's not really problematic to use that in the field. And then you can just adjust it on the side to make sure you get that absolute perfection of a lock uh, on any of your lens plates. It works with the Jitsu lens plates and all of the other Arca Swiss compatible ones as well. That's very nice. Um, of course, the um, Fluid Gimbal is also an Arca Swiss compatible head as well. Just great because you can put one style of plate on all your cameras and lenses and use it across the broad. That is excellent. Um, but the reason the ball head has been something that's just increased more and more in my kit is because my style of photography is changing. Um, I want to be able to just swap between long lens, short lens, mid range. Uh, and I find that the ball head just works very well for how I'm doing that. Lovely durability controls when I'm wearing gloves, anything like that. And um, you know, when it's attached to my four series here, it's actually a pretty reasonably compact setup that can support 25 kilos worth of gear. That is absolutely mad. And that is why it truly is probably the best um, professional support on the market, um, for sure. So that's that. So my second tripod then is this, the two series Jitso Traveler. Now this is used in a multiple of scenarios for myself. Um, when I wanna go lightweight, not carry too much with me, Traveler is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, it's got the two series legs that will still support enough weight all the way up to my 300 2.8 with the Z9, that is fantastic. But it does kind of, you know, lose some of the features. I only have um, kind of two leg angles, you know, out and low, that is great, and the kind of standard setting. Um, of course, the legs are a little bit thinner at the end. Um, so usually if I'm using the heavy lenses, I'll use it lower to the ground, but it's so much lighter to take with me. So if I'm climbing a mountain or anything like that, where I want a smaller setup, um, I don't envisage that I'm gonna be sitting in a high position or anything like that for hours and hours of time. This is certainly the tripod I will pick. The two series ball head still supports a great amount of weight. It's got all those features with the panning uh, bottom, the variable friction control and the Arca Swiss head. That is absolutely fantastic, everything I need. Um, and I use this tripod all the time, not only as my standalone tripod, um, you know, when I'm out shooting, but also as my YouTube tripod. Um, for, so when I'm filming myself, I pretty much take these two all the time, uh, and this is what I often have the camera on uh, that just gives me that solid support for filming and shooting. It means that when I'm traveling, I can have something super small and light. Uh, and even when I'm going like, on a holiday that might not be a true photographic assignment, I still throw this in the kit bag because it's nice and small, light. I don't mind carrying it around at all. It's absolutely excellent. One thing you might notice is it does actually come with a standard um, you know, central column, but I take that out straight away so that it gives me the ability to use the low angle set. You know, I spend a lot more time with the tripod on the ground than I do up high, and this low angle is far more useful to me than uh, having the central column. And of course, if I've got the central column attached, I've got to undo it and take it off before I go out in the field, so I much prefer to leave it like this. And the great thing about how they've designed the head is you can still fold it 
with the legs upwards um, with the tripod head like this because it actually fits um, through the kind of head that is perfect. And as you can see, it goes a lot smaller um, like that, that is very compact and easy to travel with. So they are my kind of two main tripods uh, in the Jitsu bag because it keeps everything nice uh, and together. The final tripod that I use all the time is this. Um, this is the Jitsu Mini Traveler. This thing is fantastic. It's extremely lightweight. For this small compact tripod, you've got carbon fiber legs. Um, they actually have two variable angles, kind of standard one and then a lower one as well. That's fantastic because it actually means you can support larger cameras on this as well. Um, I've actually tried it with the Z9 and the 302.8 before and it actually works. It is really fantastic. Um, most of the time what I use this for is those awkward angles where I can't get a big tripod in. Um, when I'm filming YouTube and stuff like that, it's great for it. But a lot of the time more for my remote camera work, you know, if I'm using my pocket wizards, triggering, triggering a uh, camera at a distance, I can set this down, you know, get a camera on this, uh, set it on the ground, um, and it just gives me that really good kind of little angle to just have it in position and get um, a really nice compact shot. Um, again, super lightweight, throw it in any camera bag. And the number of times and different uses you find for this, whether I want to set up a time lapse or you know put a flash somewhere and have a mount for it low to the ground, really, really useful. Um, I find hundreds of ways to use this little tripod and that's why it's always with me. Um, and having little supports like this just is part of that kind of professional toolkit that, that really do work well. And yes, I know it's a reasonably expensive mini tripod, but you know that lighter weight nature of it, everything like that, means that it just slips into the bag effortlessly and I never don't want to carry it. That means you've always got the tripod with you. So to kind of round things up in this video, if you're going out um, as a wildlife photographer, nature photographer, landscape photographer, whatever, invest in a good quality tripod and support. You see, if you buy a cheaper one, you're gonna get frustrated with it. You're not gonna take it out and make the most of it. You're not gonna use it in all the scenarios you should. If you get a more durable, solid, um, professional model like this, it's gonna last you for a very long time. You're gonna be able to use it in any conditions that anything throws at you. I mean, this has been to the rainforest, the Arctic, it's been out to the Okavango Delta, everything like that. I've used it in the sea, in the sand, in the rain, in the snow. It just works. I can bring it home, take it all apart, clean it out in the bath, put it back together, no problem whatsoever. I've got spare parts that I can get for it if I was to break something. And it means that my investment is gonna last for many, many years to come. I don't look at other tripods and think, oh, maybe that would be slightly better because I know this is just it. It just works, I throw it in the bag, take it out on location and get to work shooting. And that's what you want. The best gear is the stuff that kind of just blends into the background. You use it, it does what it's supposed to do and it gets the job done. And the Jitsu for me has always been the absolute best in terms of quality and performance for tripods out there. And that's why I've always invested my own money in them. And that's why I actually really enjoy working with the Jitsu team. because I think they make a truly fantastic product. So there you go. That are my support system and what I'm using as a professional wildlife photographer. If you have any questions about tripods, supports, anything like that, be sure to drop them in the comments below. Be more than happy to help you answer any queries you've got, maybe help you find a model that's gonna be perfect for you, uh, and maybe the head and style that you need for your shooting. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer those questions below. Of course, if you enjoy this bit of content, um, be sure to like and subscribe for future videos. There's gonna be some more gear stuff coming up, uh, talking about some different products and things that I've got, um, as well as going out for some more location shooting this year as well. Really looking forward to producing more videos on the channel and uh, getting them out there for you guys. But as always guys, until the next one, get out there, enjoy your wildlife photography, go make some cracking images. See ya.